What's going on guys? Welcome back to another video. In today's video, we're going to be learning how to create a sparkle slash uh, this animation here where these particles are emitted. I don't really know what you would call it. Apple uses this animation in their weather app when it's raining out to show raindrops. And we'll also talk about, you know, changing up the colors here and light mode, dark mode, hooking up to a button, all the good stuff that you'd expect. So if that all sounds good, make sure you start by destroying that like button down below for the YouTube algorithm. Hit the subscribe button while you're at it. If you're into iOS and want to stick around, let's get into the video. All right, let's go ahead and begin by opening up Xcode and creating a new project. We're going to stick with the app template under iOS and let's go ahead and give this a project name of uh, sparkles perhaps and let's go ahead and make sure our language is swift our life cycle is ui kit and we'll be working programmatically so make sure the interface is storyboard no swift ui today so go ahead and save the project wherever you'd like i'll toss it onto my desktop and first things first we're going to close that right panel and i've also got a white square image here nothing too fancy we're going to go ahead and drag this into our assets so i'll explain why we're going to need this momentarily but go ahead and drag that in and once you've done that we can expand our xcode window jump into our view controller and I'm going to go ahead and run our app in a simulator. We'll pick the 12 Pro Max. Go ahead and do that. We should have our app booting up just like that. And we can actually get into the animation that we came to talk about. So to achieve this animation, we're going to be using something called a core animation emitter layer. So I'm going to go ahead and create a function called create layer. So, you know, we have our code nice and organized. And inside of here, we are going to actually create this layer. Now this layer actually does all the heavy lifting of the animation, but there are quite a few things to configure on it. And then we'll also talk about how to, you know, get a variety of colors and whatnot. So let's first start by creating the layer. So we're going to say the layer is a CA emitter. Let's see if I can spell it correctly. Emitter uh, layer. And we're going to create it like that. Once we're done creating and configuring it, which we'll need to do, we'll need to add this as a sub layer. So I'm going to add it as a sub layer like that. And what do we need to configure in here? Well, the first thing we want to configure is uh, where the emission actually starts. So let's see if I can actually find it. It should be, I believe, emitter position. And we want this to be the actual point where the emission starts from. It's a little hard to describe, so just bear with me until we see something visual. But basically, let's go ahead and provide a, uh, instead of actually position, so let's see, CZ point, we could provide this um, directly with a X and Y. So let's actually do this. Let's actually say view.center.x. I'm going to make it the center just to start off. And then we'll go ahead and tweak this to achieve our final effect later on. So now that we've created our actual uh, layer emitter position, we need to create this concept of cells. And the layer actually animates those cells, otherwise you know referred to as myself as like sparkles. But basically, the confetti type uh, animation that you saw earlier, each of the little dots is actually a cell. So we're going to say layer dot emitter cells and you can see it's a collection of CA emitter cell. So I'm going to go ahead and define this as a array of a single cell. Now we're going to expand this after we figure out what a cell is to have multiple cells, which is why we're just going to start with one for now. So this is going to be a CA emitter cell. So let's see, I spelled this wrong, which is why autocomplete decides to not work. CA emitter cell. Now on the cell, we need to supply a ton of properties. So let's go ahead and just stub them out. So the first thing that we want to supply uh, is a scale. And I'm just gonna kind of ballpark these numbers and we'll talk about each of, each of these momentarily. So there's gonna be a birth rate, there's going to be a velocity. Uh, let's see, what else do we need? We're gonna also want, let's see what else is on here. So there's emitter range. 
let's see what else we need on here so there is in fact a color uh, i'm not going to mess with this quite yet but let's keep it here because we will talk about it there is most importantly a contents and what we want this content to actually be is a UI image, and it's going to be the image that of the um, image that we brought into our assets. And we're going to say .cg image just like that. And let's see what else we need. So there should be, uh, I believe, a spin on here as well that we could provide. Uh, but more importantly the thing that we want to look for is perhaps the range and let's take a look at the descriptions now that we're looking here so this is an angle or radius uh, for which the actual range of the cell will go so i'm going to say pi times two and let's see there's actually quite a few uh there's quite a few things on here that we can actually customize so lifetime is how long uh, the cell is around and actually if you look at the description it even tells you the lifetime of the cell in seconds So I'm gonna say 20 so let's go ahead and uh, actually give this a color to get started um, Let's actually not give a color and let me go ahead and run it and let's see what we actually get What we'll actually see is all of this business so we see that we have these white uh, squares basically moving and they're not taking up the entirety of the screen. They're very slow, but they're being emitted from the middle of the particular, uh, you know, like the emission start point that we added. So that's kind of how I wanted to visualize that. That start point is the place from where these little uh, cells are going to be spawning. So let's go ahead and fix up a couple things here. So first of all, the birth rate and the lifetime account for how you know how fast these things spawn up and how long they're around there is a velocity let's go ahead and increase this to be 200 here and let's see if that makes our effect better all right so definitely makes our effect way better the actual uh little cells go way farther now it looks a little weird that these things are being emitted from the middle but we're going to change this now, the one thing I'll mention here is for the, any of you that have used Apple's native weather application, whenever it's raining outside, the raindrops that you see coming down from the top of the app actually use this effect. The reason I know that is because I know someone uh, who works on the weather app over at Apple. So let's go ahead and start talking about color. So a color here, we can actually simply just supply, let's go with like system pink dot CG color. And I want to talk about something very interesting here, which is really important to know. It's not documented very well. What you'll notice here is that the color changed as expected. However, if you don't use a white image, the color is not going to actually render and show up. So it's very, very important that you use a white image for your actual content here. And yes, you do need a content. If you don't assign this and try to get away with, you know, just setting the color, uh, it won't work. Now, of course, you can create a color from a UI view, rather create an image from a UI view. So you don't have to bring in a dummy image, but it is advisable to do so since creating images from UI views can be expensive if you, you know, over overuse it. So now that we've got this red color working, let's go ahead and make this more interesting. So we know we can supply a array of these cells down here. So instead of doing one cell, I'm going to go ahead and say cells is going to be a CA emitter uh, cell. And what we're going to basically do is we're going to take a bunch of colors and we're going to compact map it to be this cell that we create. And then we're going to return the cell. Now, where are those colors going to come from? Well, we're going to define them in just a second, but the color will be $0 in this compact map. So let's go ahead and define the colors right here as an array of UI colors. And I'm just going to pick some system colors in here uh, randomly. And you're going to notice uh, once we actually run this, we'll get a really nice effect. So it's really good for like confetti or sparkles or I don't know, like raindrops. You can get pretty creative with what you use this stuff for. It's my job to just show you stu um, stuff and you know what's available and how to use it. But uh, yeah, I mean, if you guys come up with interesting use cases for this, I'd love to see it because um, I want to bet that you guys are more creative than I can be. So let's go ahead and run this with these colors here. And let's take a look at what this looks like. All right. So... This is what we get, pretty nuts. Uh, it looks like it's spazzing out a little bit. So 
we can do a couple things to clean this up. So let's go ahead and take a look at the scale property. So scale is specifies a scale factor applied to uh, the cell itself. Now let's go ahead and make this 0 0.5. It's not going to be, you know, a major difference, but it is noticeable. It makes everything much smaller. Let's also go ahead and uh, decrease the velocity here to 150. And we'll also decrease the lifetime to be 10. And let's see if that looks a little more calm. Definitely looks a little more calm. It actually looks like it's sped up. Ah, I did speed up because I added an extra zero by mistake. Let's make that 150, not 1500. And now things are much slower, but uh, they do actually stick around for longer. So uh, we could also go ahead and decrease the birth rate, which I thought was a fairly funny uh, property name that Apple decided to give this. And now things are definitely calmer in the farther out regions of the screen, ignoring the center. So let's go ahead and fix up the center as well. I'm going to actually go ahead and make this uh, Y negative 100. So it'll be horizontally centered, but we're only going to see, you know, the uh, basically little dots here coming down from the top of the screen. Now, it'll be heavier at the top than the bottom since that's where they're spawning from. And, you know, they go away as soon as they get basically closer to the edge of the bottom of the screen. Um, but yeah, I mean, this is basically in a nutshell how you can achieve this effect. Now, if you wanted to use like raindrop images, you can do that and you'll get that effect. And the other thing that I'll go ahead and uh, I guess share is you don't have to have this, you know, by default, right? So let's say you wanted to create a button and when you tap on the button, maybe the user like wins a game level if you're building a game or, you know, maybe something else happens that's like a positive thing that you want to uh, congratulate the user on. Maybe when they tap on a button, you can go ahead and do that. So I'm going to say button.center is center and bear with me here while we go ahead and create this button so let's see we've got a background color probably want a title on this guy as well let's go ahead and say uh let's go ahead and call it finish maybe you have an app where you know you're moving along and then you're letting the user do different things and let's see what else do we want we want to be able to tap on the button and when we tap on it you know we want to do something but in our case we're just going to show the little uh, animation so touch up inside and then finally let's go ahead and create that function uh, slash selector here and basically what i'm going to go ahead and do here is say create layer now just be careful when you go ahead and uh, start doing this because if i just keep tapping this it'll create the layer over and over and it gets uh, pretty wild if you see that i keep like smashing this so we don't want to give our user uh, a heart attack so let's make sure we limit this because you know, I can keep pressing on it. Actually, it starts to look kind of cool. Um, anyways, I'm digressing. So this is all I've got for you guys today. Pretty short and sweet video. Today is WWDC 2021. Hopefully, I'm getting this video out the correct day. And that isn't an incorrect statement. So uh, if you enjoyed the video, drop a like down below. Subscribe to the channel if you're into iOS want to stick around. Uh, I'll be looking into WWDC very closely, of course. I'll be trying to do a recap video fairly quickly and combing through all the new... Uh, goodies announced in you know Swift UI and anything else that we get and of course posting to this channel uh, Hopefully fairly quickly with anything exciting new that y'all should know about so stick around stay tuned. Thanks again for watching. I'll see you in the next one